Hello everyone and welcome to my True Crime channel. Today I'm going to be doing a statement analysis of the three 911 calls that were made in the Kaylee Anthony murder case. Kaylee Anthony was a two year old that was tragically found dead in December of 2008. It has since been thought that her mother Casey had some involvement in her disappearance and death. It's not definitely a murder case but it does look to me to be like a murder case. Casey was never done for the death of her daughter. She was done for child neglect because she didn't report her daughter missing for a month. I'm not going to go back into the full background of the case, guys, because I have recently done a video of it. So I hope you've all checked it out and you've enjoyed it. But what I'm going to do is play you the three 911 calls, then give you my analysis of them. Go back through each bit of speech and I will tell you which bits I think are strange, especially what you hear from Casey and the complete difference between Casey and her mum. I need to bring someone in to the police department. Can you tell me where I can, the closest one I can come into? What, what are you trying to accomplish by bringing them to the station? I have a 22-year-old person that has um, grand theft sitting in my auto with me. So the 22-year-old person stole something? Yes. Is this a relative? Yes. Okay, is this your son? Daughter. My car was stolen. We retrieved it today. We found out where it was at, and I've got affidavit for my banking account. I want to bring her in. I okay. want to press charges. Where, where did all of this happen? Oak Spring Drive. That's actually going to be in the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office. Let me transfer you. Okay. So my next thing will be down to trial thing, and we'll have a court order to get her. So that's what you want to say. We'll do it. You'll never. Well, then you have one more day. No, I'm not giving you another day. I've given you a month. 911. I have someone here that I need to um, be arrested in my home. They're there right now. Possible missing child. I have a three-year-old that's been missing for a month. A three-year-old? Yeah. Have you reported that? I'm trying to do that now, ma'am. I'd like to speak to an officer. Can you have someone come out to my house? Okay. Okay, i got to ask you these questions so I can put them in the, in the call, okay? Okay. Okay, what's your name? Casey Anthony. Casey's there right now? Yes, I got her. I finally found her after a month. She's been missing for a month. I found her, but we can't find my granddaughter. Is Casey not telling you where her, her daughter is? Correct. Okay, we'll have a deputy out to you as soon as one's available, okay? Thank you. Thank you. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> I'm calling a little bit ago. The deputy sheriff said, I found out my granddaughter has been taken. She has been missing for a month. Her mother finally admitted that she's been missing. She just admitted to me that she's been trying to find her herself. Okay, what is someone here now? We're talking about a three-year-old little girl. I need to find her. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today. And it smells like there's been a dead body in a damn car. My daughter finally admitted that the baby turned to I'll just give you a bit of clarity, these 911 calls, all three of them are made by Cindy and that is Casey Anthony's mum, the grandmother of Kaylee Anthony who at the time the phone calls are made is missing. Now the phone call starts off, the first phone call to 911 starts off by Cindy saying that she has someone she needs to bring to the police department and she's inquiring where the nearest police station is that she can bring the person to. Now, the police officer then asks why she's making the phone call, and she says that she has someone that has committed grand theft, and they're sitting in her auto. And then the next part's very interesting. The policeman asks who it is, and, and basically alludes, is it your son? People think <laughs> sexism, but people tend to think that men will nick cars, which I guess statistically they do nick more cars than women, but the police officer clearly didn't think it was going to be her daughter, because he says, what, your son? And she goes... Daughter, no daughter. And when she says daughter, listen carefully to it, guys, because she seems to have contempt for Casey. Not surprising, considering she's only just told her mum her daughter is missing and she doesn't know where she is with the nanny, Zanny the nanny. And it's all a bit weird. So I'll go through it part by part, but I'm just going to play you that part again so you can just hear the strangeness of everything that's being said. Hi, I need to bring someone in to the police department. Can you tell me where I can, the closest one I can come into? What, what are you trying to accomplish by bringing them to the station? I have a 22-year-old person that has um, grand theft sitting in my auto with me. So the 22-year-old person stole something? Yes. Is this a relative? Yes. 
Okay, is this your son? Daughter. My car was stolen. We retrieved it today. We found out where it was at, and I've got affidavit for my banking account. I want to bring her in. Okay. I want to press charges. Where, where did all of this happen? Oak Spring Drive. That's actually going to be in the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office. Let me transfer you. Okay. So my next thing will be down to trial thing, and we'll have a court order to set her. That's what you want to play. We'll do it. You'll never. Well, then you have me one more day. No, I'm not giving you another day. I've given you a month. So Cindy next says to the police officer or the 911 call operator that she's just got her car back, that, it, you know, it had been stolen and that she's got an David from her bank, which I think would prove that maybe Casey has been doing some fraudulent transactions, perhaps, on her mum's bank account and that she wants to bring her in and she wants to press charges. I need to bring someone in to the police department. Can you tell me where I can, the closest one I can come into? What What are you trying to accomplish by bringing them to the station? I have a 22-year-old person that has um, grand theft sitting in my auto with me. So the 22-year-old person stole something? Yes. Is this a relative? Yes. Okay, is this your son? Daughter. My car was stolen. We retrieved it today. We found out where it was at, and I've got affidavit for my banking account. I want to bring her in. I want to press charges. So the police officer then says, where did all of this happen? And she says, Hope Springs Drive, which is obviously their address. And he says, well, that's going to be in the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office. And he sort of alludes that he's going to transfer the call or make the sheriff's office or department aware of this issue. Where did all of this happen? Hope Springs Drive. That's actually going to be in the jurisdiction of the sheriff's office. Let me transfer you. Okay. So Cindy then says okay to the police officer about transferring the call. And she says, because her next sort of course of action, the next thing she's going to do is to try and get a court order to get custody of Kaylee. So my next thing will be down to trial thing and we'll have a court order to get her. Now, obviously, while this call is being made, Casey and her mum, Cindy, are in her mum, Cindy's car. Um, and she then says, if that's the way you want to play to her daughter, Casey, and you can hear muffled Casey in the background say, it's not the one I want, way I want to play. That's the way you want to play. We'll do it. You'll never. You Casey is then heard in the background in quite a muffled voice saying, give me another day. I need another day. And the mum says, no, I'm not giving you another day. I've already given you a month. Well, then you have me one more day. No, I'm not giving you another day. I've given you a month. So that is the end of the first 911 call made by Cindy Anthony regarding the disappearance of her granddaughter, Kaylee Anthony. And it's a very bizarre call. Clearly, Casey doesn't want to be part of it. She's obviously mortified that her mum's ringing the police on her, grassing her up or dobbing her in for nicking the car. Also mentioning that there are some weird things going on with her bank and mentioning this Ava David, which is or David, David, I think it's pronounced, is obviously going to prove there's been some maybe fraudulent transactions. So it's really not looking good for Casey. But you can hear the urgency in Cindy's voice. She's obviously very upset. And the fact that she wants to dob her own daughter in for nicking her car is very extreme. But then you shouldn't nick your own mum's car. You should let your mum know where you are for a month. So the extremeness in Cindy's voice is not surprising, considering the situation and the fact that she's just found out from her own daughter that her granddaughter's been missing for a month and that her daughter Casey hasn't even rung the police. So, moving on to phone call number two. I'm just going to play it again for you now. 911, I have someone here that I need to um, be arrested in my home. They're there right now. A possible missing child. I have a three-year-old that's been missing for a month. A three-year-old? Yeah. Have you reported that? I'm trying to do that now, ma'am. I'd like to speak to an officer. Can you have someone come out to my house? Okay. Okay, i got to ask you these questions so I can put them in the, in the call, okay? Okay. Okay, what's your name? Casey Anthony. Casey's there right now? Yes, I got her. I finally found her after a month. She's been missing for a month. I found her that we can't find my granddaughter. Is Casey not telling you where her, her daughter is? Correct. Okay, we'll have a deputy out to you as soon as one's available, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So going back to police phone call number two, and it's quite long, well, it's longer than the first one, so I want to go through it all properly for you. So Cindy starts off the call, Cindy Anthony, by saying, I have someone here that I need to be arrested in my home. I also have a missing child. I have a three-year-old that has been missing for a month. And the operator says, a three-year-old? Cindy says, yes. The operator says, have you reported that? 
And Sidney says, I'm trying to do that now, ma'am. I'd like to speak to an officer. Can you have someone come out to my house? The operator says, OK, I've got to ask you a few quick questions. And Cindy says, OK. The operator says, Casey there right now? Cindy says, yes, I got her. I finally found her after a month. She's been missing for a month. But I can't, or oh, sorry, but we can't, not I, but we can't find our granddaughter. The operator says, is Casey not telling you where her daughter is? Cindy says, correct. The operator says, OK, we'll have a deputy out to you as soon as one is available. And that's the end of the call. So in that second call, you don't hear Casey Anthony at all. You just hear Cindy. She sounds more stressed than the first call. Obviously, she realises her granddaughter is missing and has been missing for a month. Clearly, she's very stressed. Her daughter's stolen her car. Seems her daughter might have been stealing money from her as well. Lots of horrible things are going on at once. She's clearly stressed and it's no wonder considering what's going on. So I'm now going to play you the third 911 call. This third and final 911 call from Cindy Anthony is not very nice. It's not very pleasant to listen to. She's clearly very stressed and upset. She's clearly going into fight or flight mode. She's panicking. She's stressed. And clearly, Casey Anthony isn't. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> So the third 911 call starts off and Cindy is clearly stressed, very panicked. You can tell from the tone of her voice, she's very upset. She starts off by saying, I called a little bit ago to speak to the deputy sheriff and I found out that my granddaughter has been taken. She has been missing for a month. Her mother has admitted that she's been that she's been missing. She's just admitted it to me that she's been trying to find her herself. So the operator then says, OK, what is? And Cindy continues on and the operator can't get a sentence out. And Cindy says, we've got a three year old little girl and we need to find her. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today and it smelt like there'd been a dead body in the damn car. My daughter finally admitted that the babysitter stole her. So, not great. Really not great. Very shocking. Lots of stuff to analyse there. So really going back to the first couple of calls, Cindy is clearly distancing herself from Casey. She doesn't want to call her by her name. She doesn't even say it's her daughter, just that she's got a person that needs to be arrested for grand theft and that they're with them. Um, and then the second call, I have someone here that I need to be arrested in my home. So not our home, it's her home. So clearly Casey's not seen as living in the family home anymore and not wanted either. Um, and the fact that it's I have someone here, complete distancing. She's clearly completely ashamed of her daughter. And at this point, she really doesn't want to have much to do with her from what I can gather. So for me as a statement analyst, the most interesting call here to analyse is the third and final one. Cindy is stressed. Cindy is panic. Cindy has gone into fight or flight mode. She's stressed. Her life sounds like it's ending. Her lovely little granddaughter has disappeared. Obviously she's going to be distraught. And it's the bit where she mentions the car and the smell of the dead body that I found the most shocking really of all here. Um, it's not nice to hear. It's not really nice to read out, but it's the way she says it, the urgency in her voice, you can hear it. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today and it smelt like there'd been a dead body in the damn car. You know, she's stressed. She's not messing around here, Cindy Anthony. She wants to find a granddaughter. There's urgency. She wants to find a granddaughter. Nine one one, what's your emergency? <laughs> In calls like these where there's a missing child, you expect the parents to sound like Cindy does, since Cindy is the grandmother. Cindy sounds stressed, Cindy sounds panicked, Cindy wants to know where her daughter, her granddaughter is, sorry. There's urgency there. 
zero urgency from Casey. And I think if you've been watching my videos before, guys, you know what might be coming. The red flag. I'm sorry, but Casey Anthony does get a red flag here. No urgency. No nothing for her daughter. No bother. No care. No worry. No love. Zero. Nothing. Nothing for uh, Kaylee. No care. No love, like I said. Very weird. Very abnormal. Missing children and their parents their parents do not behave like that it's very odd almost a bit like Madeleine McCann's parents who never seem that bothered in my opinion my humble opinion about the disappearance of the daughter now I imagine Casey Anthony had some sort of guilty knowledge about what happened to her daughter that's why she's asking her mum to give her another day just give me another day mum to get this sorted so I can go on the run and probably never see you again so the grandmother clearly wants to find the, the granddaughter, but the mother doesn't want to find the daughter. And for me, as I said before, that raises a huge red flag. It's just not good. Why the hell didn't she want to find her daughter? So going back to Cindy's words and statements throughout these three phone calls, I do not detect deception at all. Zero. She's being completely truthful. And it's quite interesting to analyse a call where someone's being completely truthful compared to ones that I've analysed where people are being deceptive because you can hear the urgency in her voice. And when an operator receives a call about a missing person, that's what they want to hear. They want to hear the urgency. They want to hear that I need to find her. We must find her. We've got a three-year-old and she's missing. They must have realised that the grandmother had nothing to do with Kaylee's disappearance and from the lack of um, sort of urgency from Casey and the fact she didn't even really want to speak to them raises a lot of red flags. Lots of red flags. So next I'm going to play you another snippet from the end of the last, the third and final 911 call because it's where we finally get to hear from Casey. She's not just muffled in the background because the deputy sheriff asked to speak to her. So I'm going to play that for you now and then I'm going to go back through it bit by bit and analyse Casey's statements. She just admitted to me that she's been trying to find her herself. Okay, what if someone here now we're talking about a three-year-old little girl? I need to find her. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today. And it's not like there's been a dead body in a girl's car. Oh my daughter finally admitted that the baby turned four. How long has she been missing for? I have not seen her since the seventh of June. been missing for the last 31 days. And you last saw her a month ago? 31 days. From 31 days. Who has her? Do you have, do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Who is that? Babysitter? She's, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. Why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which is stupid. So the 911 operator or the deputy sheriff, whoever it is that she's speaking to, Cindy, asks if her daughter's there and she says yes. And she says, can I speak with her? And while this is going on, I think George must arrive home because you can hear Cindy saying to George, 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 Kaylee is missing. So she then tells Casey that the deputy sheriff wants to speak to her and the operator or the deputy sheriff says hello. Casey says hello. The operator says, can you tell me what the hell is going on? Casey says, my daughter has been missing for the last 31 days. Now, just starting here, I find it weird that she doesn't say my daughter Kaylee. It's just my daughter. Um, distancing language going on there she doesn't want to take responsibility of her ownership of her daughter as a mother so that's not good to start with from Casey and I think we probably all know what that means that's a red flag for Casey that's really not good that she starts off with self distancing language and the fact that she uses the last 31 days rather than a month now is it because Casey thought a month sounded worse and that 31 days because you can still say days doesn't sound as long Personally, that's what I think's happened there. So going back to that, she says, my daughter's been missing for the last 31 days. The operator says, and you last saw her a month ago? And Casey says, yes, 31 days. Again, not wanting to say a month because it sounds bad. Like the operator said, what, you last saw her a month ago? Yes, 31 days. It was only days. Let's not worry so much. 
And the operator says, who has her? Do you have a name? Casey says her name is Zania Gonzalez Fernandez. And the operator says, who is that? The babysitter? Casey says, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. So the fact that the operator has to ask who that is, you'd expect if this was a parent of a missing child that wanted to know where the child was, had no guilty knowledge of what had happened to the child, she would say, the nanny has got her and say the name. It's a bit of a long name, so I'm not going to say it again. But, you know, you shouldn't need to be asked who that is. So that's weird. Another red flag. And this bit here, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. So all she needed to say was that it was the nanny. We know what's happening. Another red flag for Casey here. She didn't need to say that she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. She's just my nanny. It's, it's just information that's not needed. And she's obviously stressed and worried by this phone call that she's happened to be part of. And she's trying to story tell and sort of get herself out of the shit, in my opinion there. So the operator says, OK, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? So the operator has clearly noted what I noted here, that she says 31 days and the operator says a month. So to try and get her on side, the operator says 31 days. Casey says, I have been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try and find her. And at that point, when she says find her, she almost tries to sound upset, but it's really fake and I don't believe it at all. And she ends with saying, which was stupid. So... The fact that she doesn't offer up the information already to say before this question is asked by the operator, I have been looking for her, I've been going through other resources. She has to be asked why it's taken over a month or a month to make the phone call to the police um, and, and why, you know, she's been going through other resources. She doesn't say what those resources are. There isn't much more to the phone call, so that is the end of it, guys. But when you listen to Casey and when you listen to Cindy, you hear two completely different people. You hear one that is panicked, one that wants to know where her granddaughter is. You hear one that's relaxed, quite casual, and really doesn't want to know where her daughter is. Now, why is that? Is it because Casey knew where her daughter was? Is it because Casey already knew her daughter was dead? Why is it that there's no urgency, there's no want to find Kaylee? It's all very strange. She just admitted to me that she's been trying to find her herself. Okay, what is what someone here now? We're talking about a three-year-old little girl. I need to find her. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today. And it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. Oh, my daughter finally admitted that the baby's in the store. How long has she been missing for? I have not seen her since the 7th of June. for the last 31 days. And you last saw her a month ago? 31 days. From 31 days. Who has her? Do you have, do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Who is that? Babysitter? She's, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. And why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which is stupid. Now, my views on this are I don't necessarily think Casey killed her own daughter. Personally, I believe she knows what happened to her daughter and that it you know, wasn't just some sort of accident that was covered up. I personally wonder whether Casey left her daughter unattended and she drowned in the pool. Did Casey give her some kind of medication to put her to sleep at night because she was a young mum and wanted to sort of have a carefree party lifestyle? That went a bit wrong and the child died. I'm not sure. Again, guys, these are just my views and thoughts. I could be completely wrong on this. It could be that another member of the family killed the little girl and it wasn't Casey and Casey had nothing to do with it. So I could be wrong, but from her in the phone call, I don't hear a mother that's panicked about her daughter. I don't hear a mother that even loved her daughter. I hear someone that's not bothered apart from about themselves. And the only thing they're worried about in this phone call is the fact that they're maybe about to get busted. I'm afraid it's not a very positive analysis. Obviously with Casey Anthony, it wasn't going to be a positive analysis. The phone calls are weird. At least one of them sounds urgent and, and desperate to find Kaylee. It's such a shame that her mother didn't feel that way. I do feel that Casey knows a lot more than she ever let on. The fact she didn't want to talk in her own court case said it all really. Her poor parents, I do feel very sorry for them. I do wonder if abuse might have gone on in the family home. There are sort of signs for it. There could be no backing in that. 
and maybe Casey wasn't abused by her father, but there are so many sad elements to this case. It really is heartbreaking that all these years later, after 2008, no one's ever been arrested for the death of Kaylee Anthony. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed my analysis of the 911 calls in the Kaylee Anthony murder or death. Not sure which one it is. It's obviously a death, but was it a cover-up? Was it a murder? Clearly it was a cover-up of something, but none of us know what. So hopefully one day we might know, but who could say? So anyway, guys, I hope you're all well and taking care of yourselves. And I'll be back very soon with another True Crime video. Bye for now.